Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Salem. And tonight I wanted to comment upon a comment that I received here at Magic TV. And we get a lot of comments here at Magic TV. And they tend to fall into one of three categories. The first category are people who may agree or disagree or like or dislike what we do, but they make sane, intelligent comments, uh, pro or con to the things that we, we talk about, the people we interview, etc. Uh, they have a clue and they express themselves in an adult, sensible, mature way. The second category are people, mostly either fundamentalist Christians or fundamentalist atheists, who seem to spend a great deal of time searching out videos that espouse other points of view just so that they can trash them. And they make nasty, nasty comments frequently, uh, particularly on our older videos. They haven't really caught up to the newer ones yet. Though I'm sure in time they will, because it seems to be something that they do a lot of. And then the third group are people who obviously just don't have a clue uh, and express opinions without foundation, uh, often highly colored opinions, and often, often very silly things. And it's actually this last one that I want to comment upon, although not necessarily the comment you may expect. And uh, I received a comment on one of my old interviews with Oberon Zell and Morning Glory Zell. And the comment basically was to the effect that the, the, the poster really hates when pagans are portrayed this way, and this silly couple obviously don't know anything about paganism uh, and are behaving foolishly. Now, for those of you, I suspect if you're watching this video, you know who Oberon Zell is. Uh, and he has been a leader of the pagan community for nearly 50 years. Some people like Oberon, some people don't like Oberon. Uh, some people agree with, with his ideas and means of presentation, some people do not. Both of those are fine. But he certainly didn't uh, drop into the community yesterday. Uh, in fact, in many ways the community is what it is, in part because of Oberon. And had he not been here, who knows how it would be. Uh, so the idea that uh, this poster had no clue who they were commenting upon really kind of caught my attention. Now, it's not the first time that's happened, but it caught my attention today because it touches on another matter, which is actually my comment. And that is, and I've talked about this before, the fact that there seems to be a generational disconnect in our community, and that as each new generation comes in, they often fail to connect to the generations already here, and therefore a great deal of knowledge and experience is lost seemingly every few years. Uh, one of the reasons that I think the World of Witches Museum is very important is it gives a place to preserve our history so that younger people can, in fact, tie into it. Uh, I do realize in the real-time community, often what you're able to learn depends on who you meet. But thanks to the online world, you can meet everyone in the world. And you can find out things that previously would have been much harder. And I feel that one of the main roles of World of Witches Museum is to maintain the narrative of our community from one generation to the next and to share what the different generations have done. Now, I certainly know that the history of the pagan community uh, is controversial and not agreed upon. And I certainly take my own point of view within that context. But even so, and even when we can't agree necessarily on who did what when, we can agree on a lot of things including who certain people were. And I think that it's very important that the younger generations learn about this and have an idea uh, of both those people who are not controversial and those people who are controversial. And when there are different opinions about the nature of our history, that they hear all of them and not necessarily just the one they happen to have met in real time. For me, this is a main part of my mission, uh, to educate people, to carry forward the knowledge of our past and our present, and really to, to help to build a stable community, which in many ways is something we have not had, even though the pagan revival goes back many generations. The fact of that constant generational disconnect often gives the impression it does not. And, you know, almost everything I talk about from the labels people use to their disagreements over, over semantics really ties into this same issue. Because if we would just stop trying to cut ourselves down to the smallest common denominator, we would see that we are a very old movement. Certainly,
the smaller the denominator, the more recent, because the denominators keep splitting all the time. But as a movement, it's been around a while. And the fact that we're unaware of this in many cases, to me, is breathtaking and one of the main reasons to have a museum. So that people not only know about people like Gerald Gardner, but also people like Yola Morganog, Gleb Botkin, uh, Thomas Martin from Marymount, and many other similar people who are perhaps less well known, uh, but very important to the history of this movement. So, those are my thoughts for tonight. I hope you, again, I hope you find them thought-provoking and interesting. And until next time, may you blessed be.